One thing I keep telling people is that they shouldn't get too caught up with the languages that they're using or the type of computers that they're using, whether it's this operating system or that operating system, whether they're going to do Java or Python or PHP or whatever. I One of the things I keep stressing to people that these things are not nearly as important as you would think. And uh, the reason I say that is, well, in a nutshell, A, as a professional developer, when you become a really a professional, you're going to be language agnostic or, in other words, language neutral. You're going to look at all these languages as just tools to leverage depending on the circumstances. So you're going to come to the situation, if I was, a, if I was doing home repairs, as an analogy, if I come into the job and I say, okay, uh, we got some nails to hammer in, I'm not going to pull out my screwdriver, I'm going to grab my hammer. Or if I got screws to screw in, I'm not going to pull out my hammer, I'm going to pull out a screwdriver. Same thing with programming. Sometimes Java might be the choice. Sometimes it might be Swiss. Sometimes it might be PHP. Sometimes it might be JavaScript. Sometimes it might be Python. You get the idea. You have to try to get out of these camps that you're in the Python camp or you're in the Ruby camp or you're in the PHP camp, but you never want to be in the Ruby camp. That's a stupid... Okay, that's just a joke. Even the Ruby camp, sometimes it makes sense. To, it would make sense to use Ruby. I think... That use case is diminishing, but nonetheless. So why am I talking about this? Well, it's funny. I, I've been telling people this, and you know, don't get in these camps. Become a master developer. Noobish developers will say, this language is the best and everything else sucks. And if somebody tells you that on YouTube or anywhere else, you know by definition they're noobs. By definition they're noobs. Because every language, every technology has its purpose or has its strong points and its weak points with some exceptions like some technologies are just dated and you know they're old school and you're not going to use them anymore but uh you know i'm talking of the modern ones you know anyway you know them, you know the names so i bring this up because i'm dealing with that with uh, camera equipment because i've been doing this camera thing now for uh, a few years now I've been really getting into a few years, and so I'm, you know, right now I'm in my car, so I'm using my M50, and then I, I got a, I got a GoPro, and then I got a, an Insta360, and um, I'm looking at all these tools, and then at home I got a giant cinema camera, it costs 10, 10 grand, and I got all kinds of mics, I got all kinds of garbage, garbage, I got all kinds of uh, equipment, always looking for uh, an advantage, if, I, if you will, in the uh, game of producing video and producing content for everybody. Now, the fact of the matter is, I think that the level that I've gotten to in terms of YouTube, 100,000 plus subs, etc., I think that I could have done it just with this one camera right here. Now, the problem was, I wasn't getting the image that I wanted out of this when I bought this thing, or in the previous one. I wasn't getting the image quality that I wanted. And uh, so I thought, ah, i got to try to get this camera, this lens. I spent a lot of money. That's the problem when you got money to spend. You need to spend it. So what I've since discovered, but the problem wasn't so much the camera, although don't get me wrong, this entry-level mirrorless camera from Canon doesn't compare to the $10,000 cinema, professional cinema camera. The cinema camera gives you all kinds of capabilities. That said, if I had concentrated in my fundamentals... You knew that was coming. Of uh, videography, of exposure, of sound. If I would have concentrated on those fundamentals and really understood them, embraced them, I would have gotten a much better image two years ago than I was you know, than I was getting back then in terms of video quality. Now, if you look some some of those old videos, even with the ten thousand dollar camera, sometimes I look like a Smurf. I was all bluer. Sometimes I was all green. I looked like the Hulk. Sometimes I looked like I was 800 years old with lines in my face. And it was because I didn't know what I was doing with the camera. I didn't know what I was doing with the video. I didn't understand the fundamentals of shooting video, the fundamentals of making the image look good. These are fundamentals when you apply them even to five, six-year-old video cameras, five, six-year-old uh, mirrorless cameras like this, I don't, know if there, I don't know if there was fire. Yeah, I guess three, four-year-olds. Okay, anyway. Even with older cameras with inferior technology, if I had understood 
the foundational concepts and techniques of lighting, of videography, etc., etc., the video quality would be much, much, much better. So I understand, man. I understand when you're first starting out in a field, you're looking for the right tech. You're looking for that technology that's going to unlock your full potential and unleash your power. So in this case, as a software software developer you're looking for that perfect language that perfect framework that perfect laptop or computer to just make your career fly so you'd write the best code at the end of the day you have nothing to do with that because these days all the modern languages they're pretty good they got pretty good as I've pointed out in other videos you've seen hugely successful apps written in Many languages. LinkedIn is Java, right? Um, Facebook is PHP. Twitter was Ruby. Uh, P, um, YouTube, I believe, originally was Python. You see what I'm saying? Uh, it goes on from there. WordPress, another example. PHP, you know, WordPress.com, huge site, you know, etc., etc., etc. So try not to get caught up in the technology stack. You. You know, I've discussed in other videos what are the uh, criteria you should apply when choosing a tech. It's the job, the type of work, uh, the type of project you're developing, uh, the work environment, meaning, you know, are there jobs in PHP around here? Are there jobs in Ruby? That's a huge part of, uh, of the game. So try not to get caught up in all that stuff. And again, I'm sympathetic. I'm just saying I have to remind myself as a relative noob, I've only been doing this video stuff for, you know, I started doing videos years ago, but really got serious with it maybe two and a half years ago, three years ago. And typically, you can get comp where you can start making money with, uh, uh, with a, a skill, like whether it be videography or, pro, or coding, but at a low level, within a month, if you really work hard and you got a little bit of ability. But to really get it to a level of, uh, of uh, I would say, pro-level coder, where you could be the tech lead, the technology lead, the uh, developer lead. You're looking, I say, three years minimum. Don't get me wrong, you can start making money right away, if you, especially if you follow along uh, what I teach. So this brings me to my last point. The whole point of this YouTube channel, and I think I'm going to, I got to come up with a good term, but instead of doing what everybody else is doing, and that's the key, I think, to be successful in any field, whether it be a business or a YouTube channel, is you want to have your own unique offerings, your own unique, unique you know, in terms of YouTube, your own unique content. In terms of your product, your own unique take on a product or service that nobody else has. That's how you be successful. So that being said, this channel, my focus is to teach you the foundational concepts and the very advanced concepts. Basically, what I'm giving you in all my videos here is what I wish I could have, if I could go back in time, if I could grab the time stone from Dr. Strange and go, do, 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 go back in time to talk to young Steph. Like, okay, this is what you got to do here. You got to do this. Don't do this. Do that. You know, bing, bing. I could have saved myself so much time, so much time, so much money. Save myself so much money. That's what I'm trying to do with this with this YouTube channel. If you follow what I teach, the thinking, the level of thinking, how I look at things, how I view software, how I view code, etc. You you'll see, you know, I got a, over a 50, 1,500 videos. I think it is, or 1,300 videos that are published now. I'm trying to save you 10 years. So instead of you having to spend 10, 15 years to gain this knowledge. I'm trying to save you. I'm trying to help you leapfrog ahead of everybody else. And in fact, I've had other people say uh, on uh, on YouTube, they said that they would, you know, they just started to learn to code and they were listening to my videos and then they would talk to senior developers and the senior developers were really surprised about how they had a much more advanced perspective about software development than than they thought they would given that they were just still, just starting out. So that's the whole point of this 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 YouTube channel, I think is to teach you, uh, to help you get ahead, to help you uh, learn what I learned over the last 20 years. Learn it right away. Sometimes because you're younger, because you're new to the game, you may not see it. You may not see or understand why 
I'm suggesting certain things. So this is where you're going to have to decide whether or not you're going to have uh, faith in my experience. Because sometimes it takes an experienced eye to understand exactly what's going on in front of you. I hope that makes sense. It's kind of like my father. My father, father's like one of these hunter fishermen, hunt, hunting guy, fishing guy. And I remember when we were young, uh, we would go, uh, I only did it a few times. I'm not, I'm not somebody who hunts myself, so... Uh, so he, we, we went partridge hunting a few times. Partridge is kind of like this wild bird. And we'd be walking in through the woods. And my father would stop. And he'd go, okay, right over there. You see about 50 yards away? Right under that bush there. And I go, what's under there? And I look and I'm looking and I'm looking. I can't see it. I can't see No, there's a partridge right over there 50 feet away. No, it's right there. And he's like, I couldn't see it. I couldn't see it. And sometimes it would take him like a minute. And I said, oh, okay, there it is. But he had the trained, experienced eye. So he could see that partridge, that little bird, uh, uh, under the tree, under the bush, just waiting there, waiting to get shot. So, uh, yeah, so my father would see it, go, bing! And then we'd have partridge that night. But I, I wasn't able to see it. I wasn't able to see it because I just didn't have the training. I didn't have the experienced eyes that he has. Same thing in any profession, software development. I try to bring my pers my perspective of 20 years of being in the game, something that it took me well over a decade over time to develop this this experience point of view. So this is what all of these videos are about. This, if I could go back in time and send myself, send young Steph these videos, and say, "Hey, this is what you got to do, man," I would be fantastic. So this is your opportunity, especially if you're young. This is your opportunity to leap ahead, skip those 10, 15 years, 20 years understand what I've learned and uh, you'll be much better off. All right, that's it for today. Bye-bye.